We came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We come to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The God we serve has already made a way out of no way. And we celebrate Jesus as we, we celebrate his love and his, his tender care. Our God is greater than our circumstances. And we want to declare it. Hallelujah. We sing the water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Out of the ashes, out of the ashes we rise. No one
Well, today is a special day in the life of our church. We're coming live from our own facility, our new worship facility, the place where we'll be serving as a base of operations for all the ministry work that God has called us to. We didn't want to just put it on video. We wanted you to be a part of it. So we're going live. It's going to look different. It's going to feel different. But most of all, it's going to be a blessing. And I'm glad that you chose to be a part of it. Make sure you let others know right now that something special and supernatural is going down at Kingdom Fellowship. Let's go. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Praise the Lord, Kingdom Fellowship. We want to encourage you that the best is yet to come. Put those blessed hands together and let's rock from side to side and enjoy Jesus. Hallelujah. No matter what you're going through, be encouraged that the best is yet to come. For this, our church, for our lives.
the Lord. Well, you ain't seen nothing yet. That's your testimony. Why don't you just give God a hand, hand wave. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Well, hallelujah to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is and always shall be. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Doesn't it feel good to be here today? Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and open with a word of prayer. Our Lord and our God, we thank you that this is the day that you have made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in this day. God, we know that you can do anything but fail. And so daddy, we gather together today on this momentous occasion to honor you, to honor how far you've brought us, to honor where you're taking us. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you have already accomplished during this season of our lives collectively and even for our lives individually. Lord, you are God and like you, Daddy, there is no other. So before we do anything else, before we say anything else, God, we lift our hands in worship and in praise to acknowledge that we're only here by your grace and that we're only here by your mercy. We pray now, oh God, for the manifestation of your spirit to fill this place afresh yet again. We thank you for the festivities of this weekend, but God, we know that there is still more for you to do. So we ask you, Lord God, that our hearts would be open to you today, that you would speak, Lord God, through the preacher of the hour today. Allow your anointing to fall afresh upon Dr. Watley yet again, that we might hear a word from you, a word for now, but a word also for our going forward. Thank you, Daddy, for your goodness and your mercy. And always, God, please get the glory for yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning will be taken from the Gospel of Mark. That's chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. You may stand. If you have your Bible or your phone, you may look at that as well, or the screen. Mark 1, 14 and 15 in the New International Version. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come. He said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Thanks be to God. Let's go higher with our hymn. Amen.
Amen. Doesn't it feel good, amen, to worship, amen, together, hallelujah, to Jesus. We thank God for this day. We now want to take time to welcome all of our guests and all of our visitors. You may take your seats, amen, especially for those that are visiting with us online. Um, if you are a guest and you're, welcome, and you're visiting with us online, this should be a, uh, a 313131 that you'll see coming across the screen right now that will ask you to text that information, text 313131, amen, that we might be able to stay in contact with you. We are so grateful to have you worshiping with us on today, amen, on behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Matthew L. Watley, come on, his beautiful wife, amen, in the first family, we welcome you, amen, to Kingdom Fellowship. African Methodist Episcopal Church. We're so glad to have you with us. I pray that you're getting in on the chat, amen, that we might be able to share the love of Jesus Christ with you on today. Now we're going to worship you in our own Kingdom Fellowship AME Church way with our Gather, Grow, Give, and Go.
if I'm honest with you, uh, I'm all in my feelings right now because I realize how, for the, how far the Lord has brought us as a people, as a congregation. When we started at Blair High School and got to Tech Road, we thought this was great and this would be it, but God had even more for us. We had a couple stumbles along the way, but throughout it all, God was faithful and you were faithful. And today is that day of culmination where we see the prayers of the righteous, the sacrifices of the saints all coming to pass to bring about a new facility to the glory and honor of God. This is gonna be sacred ground, not because of the nature of the material for the building, but because of the purpose to which it's being built. And I'm so glad and grateful to serve as pastor of this congregation and that God would allow us to be a part of his plan that will bless generations yet unborn. Amen. Kingdom, it's good to see you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we're glad in it. I can't speak for you, but I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the parking lot and have church. Hallelujah. Kingdom, it's good to see you. It's good to see Man, I miss y'all. I miss y'all. Even with the mask, I miss you. Amen. We're grateful to God for being in this service one more time. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. We certainly want to thank God for all those who are sharing this worship experience with us online. We recognize you in the kitchen, in the family room, in the bed. We just want to give you a wave wherever you are. And we, would, we will be with you next week. Amen. But we're so grateful to God for the advent uh, of uh, innovation that is a part of this ministry. I want to thank God for all of our leaders, all of our officers, all of our ministers. Amen. Michael White, amen, and the White Family Singers, amen. They've been holding us down every Sunday, amen. I want to thank God for the band, amen. Give it up for the band. I feel like James Brown. Give it up for the band, amen. I want to thank God for our AV ministry, all those who have been working assiduously. It's, it's a Hollywood production every Sunday, amen. 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 We're, we're so grateful to God for not simply the multiplicity of gifts that he has located here at Kingdom Fellowship, but more importantly, for a people who have a mind to work, who are using those gifts to build up the kingdom of God, to lift up the bloodstained banner of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to make happy the heart of the Lord as we continue to do God's work even through this season. And so I I'm so grateful to God. I don't have any announcements for you today. Amen. I just want to celebrate what the Lord is doing this weekend. Amen. As we, as we consecrate this property for the glory and honor of God. Amen. Uh, we're, I can't hardly wait. Amen. To preach from the pulpit. It's going to be just about 100 feet over there. I can't wait to see the choir and the choir stand. I can't wait to see the ushers with their arm behind their back opening the door saying, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house. Oh, I can't wait, amen, to baptize somebody's baby and to marry somebody and even help some transition, some saint transition home, amen. We gonna have church, 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 amen. I can't wait for the man on the organ to kick my key so I can try to close it like Dr. Washington did. I, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know this ain't on the program, but can I ask just one question? I said, can I ask you one question? Ain't he all right? I said, ain't he all right? I, I know he's all right. Yeah. I've been doing that for myself, by myself, for the last six months. I just felt like doing it when I could hear somebody holler back. I'm sorry. I'm, I know I'm out of order. I'm out of order. I'm out of order. I apologize. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, nah, that ain't in the script. That ain't in the script. We got power the script. You can't high five nobody, but just wave somebody and tell them I feel like giving God. Distance praise. I, I can't touch nobody else, but right here where I am. <laughs> All right, let's go, let's go. Hallelujah. Don't you feel better? You've been saying, I can't wait to get back to church. When I get back to church, y'all, y'all sit down now. We want to stay in line with the CDC guidelines. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, don't you feel better? I know you at home wishing you could be here. Y'all just go ahead and wave your hand right where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It ain't the same. It just ain't the same. Amen. We want to praise God for what God is doing. It's time to receive our tithes and offerings for today. Amen. We're grateful to God. We, in this season, we're grateful to God that we have it to give. Amen. We've said it before, but it means something now. Amen. That we don't take for granted the blessing of God, God's provision in our lives. Listen, uh, we're grateful because it's not just that a people that had a mind to work, but a people that had a mind to give, to sow, and to sacrifice. That has allowed us to be where we are. You know it's a $45 million project, and before the bank funds anything, we will have put in $15 million of our own, of our own, of our own, of our own, of our own. We want to thank God that this has already been consecrated because the work of ministry has already been going on here. So if you prefer to sow into our Kingdom Cares ministry, we certainly appreciate that. And then on this ground, somebody shout groundbreaking. On this groundbreaking weekend, we certainly want to sow into our Kingdom Builders uh, campaign. That is uh, what we're sowing into to build this glorious uh, temple to the glory and honor of God. Uh, Bishop Walt Scott Thomas put it yesterday like this. He said, listen, if you're here, if you're watching, you most likely have already been giving. And so he said, for this weekend, we are doing a stretch. We're doing the extra mile. Amen. And so I want to encourage you. We've already, uh, many of us who were here yesterday stood uh, with our extra mile gift. And if you weren't here yesterday or if you didn't view yesterday, I want to encourage you to join us with an extra mile and make an extra special gift uh, for our groundbreaking weekend. And we believe that God is a reward of them that diligently seek him. In fact, I'm so grateful to God. We don't even have any uh, passings to announce. No one's transition that we've known about this past week. And so let's just praise God for his keeping power would you bow your head and let's go before the mercy seat father we thank you for this sacred ground for this sacred space and for this signal honor to sow into kingdom work god i pray that you will continue to bless both gift and giver for the upbuilding of your kingdom in jesus name somebody ought to say amen amen well y'all it's sunday it's groundbreaking weekend we up under the tent we're viewing from home come on y'all let's have church Kingdom Fellowship on the fourth Sunday of September. We're celebrating our pastor and first family. Due to COVID-19, we weren't able to celebrate Pastor Wadley on his one-year anniversary as the senior pastor of Kingdom Fellowship AME Church. But on the 27th, we will. We want to hear some of your testimonies and expressions of appreciation of how Pastor Wadley and the first family has impacted your life. Simply record a video and upload it by September 16th just text uploads to 313131. Despite growing interest in diversity and inclusion, African Americans are still underrepresented. Systemic racism remains a barrier to the upward mobility of black professionals. Our fight for justice cannot merely focus on the legal system. 
It must deal with the economic system that it protects. Now is the time for change. Introducing the Black Idea Coalition. We are dedicated to helping companies achieve black inclusion, diversity, and equity in action. Marches and movements only have meaning when they lead to structural change in the economic system. Join us on September 23rd for the Black Idea Summit. Register now at theblackidea.com. Let's create an equitable future for the black community. Our time is now. Follow the money. My name is Matthew Wobbly, and I endorse this message. Registration for Financial Peace University is open now. These virtual classes will help you to get a better grip on your financial future, get out of debt, and begin to develop the personal and family wealth that God has designed for you to have. We started off in credit card debt with no savings. In addition, we were newly married and were not on one accord around our finances. We have been blessed and during a time of lack. Registration is $50 for members of Kingdom Fellowship AME Church and $89 for non-members. Registration is available online at kingdom.global slash financial peace. Virtual classes are held Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 7 p.m. and Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Financial Peace University and Kingdom Fellowship, changing the lives of believers through financial freedom. Life groups this spring was the best decision that I made for 2020. I was looking for somewhere that I could socially interact with my brothers and sisters of Kingdom, being that I'm new. I loved it. I loved the people that I met through there, and I wouldn't have had the opportunity to meet these people if it wasn't for life groups. I had my fellow brothers and sisters who were in the group with me cheering me on. Being a member of the Stepping in Faith Walking Life Group, has meant accountability and growth. Our Christian relationships have gently urged us to stay motivated, to follow God's word, to stay in God's word as we take care of ourselves, our families, as well as the members of our life group. Amen. It's preaching time. And there is a show enough certified preacher in the house. In the person of Reverend Dr. William Donnell Watley, the esteemed and acceptable pastor of the St. Philip Amy Church in Atlanta, Georgia, and as we say in the church world and vicinity. We're so excited uh, to have him come and share, as I shared on yesterday. He's always been you know, just like a father to me. Amen. We're grateful to God uh, for uh, his gifts and ministry, for the standard that he has set uh, for generations of preachers uh, to do ministry with integrity. Uh, the Lord has used him to be a blessing to congregations throughout this country and throughout the world. But I'm so glad that uh, when all of his assignment was over, uh, he and my mother were able to demonstrate through the way that they lived the gospel that he proclaimed from the pulpit. And uh, like many of you all who are my age, uh, you now find yourself trying to parent your parents, especially out here in these COVID streets, trying to keep them home and follow the guidelines. Uh, so I've been trying and trying and trying. But I knew on this one, there was no way in the world I was going to keep him from being here to celebrate with us his surrogate church family. And so uh, if he had to walk, he was going to be here. And so I said, since he's coming, he might as well go ahead and bless this house. Trained both in head and at heart, has more degrees than a thermometer, has written over 25 books. He's been the featured preacher at the Hampton Ministers Conference. His assignment today is to do what he's done for over half a century, stand in John's shoes and rightfully divide the word of truth. When you've seen the Father, you've seen the Son. And I present to you my father, the Reverend Dr. William Donnell Watley, who will preach to us the word of God. Would you help me thank God uh, for Dr. Watley today and help me thank God for him coming and sharing and let him know that for him we are praying. 
Somatic selection, then we'll see what word there is from the Lord.
into your presence, gracious God, we come again grateful for all you have brought us through and for all you have brought us to. We pray for your favor as we stand once again to make the attempt at declaring your truth. Hide us behind the cross, keep us under the drippings of your blood that you alone will be seen and glorified. We acknowledge and confess that no word of empowerment and transformation can come forth unless you give it and unless you bring it. So we pray that you would bring forth the words you want brought forth, only the words you want brought forth to your glory and to your honor, nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. Pray that you would bring forth the fruit, the response, and the harvest that you desire. To your glory and to your honor, nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. We pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit who destroys every stronghold, demolishes every yoke, who renews body, mind, and spirit, who decimates, cancels any attack from the pit of hell. Pray that nothing, absolutely nothing, will more interfere with, diminish, distract, nor anyone from your word that goes forth to your glory and to your honor. Nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We greet you with the joy of the Lord and to your distinguished pastor and founder, the Reverend Matthew Lawrence Watley. I'm a Thank you for inviting me to be a part of this glorious experience in the life of this church and in your ministry. And um, when you've seen the Son, you have seen the Father. About 40 years ago, I had hair and a beard. Matter of fact, when he was born, I had a beard. And when I cut it off, he and my daughter walked past me because they didn't recognize me. I, I cut it off because when I had reached your age, there was too much gray showing. <laughs> Good to see you again, Brother Michael. You and your family bless me in ways that you do not know why. Our service is broadcast at 8 and 11. And so at 10 o'clock, I make the choice between you and my daughter, who also has a service. And I was talking about you and your family. And I said, all of them can sing? And he said, yes. And I said, what happened to us? And. Uh, and he did try to keep me confined. But I followed the guidelines, mask, social distance, wash my hands. But I'm not going to stay locked up in the house unless I have to. And those of you who have grown children recognize that sometimes you have to tell them I was grown before you were. <clears throat> to my brother, Brother Gerald Francis, my sister, Sister Michelle, Lady Shauna, and to my uh, granddaughter, if, whom I love and admire, even though she sometimes has problems with manners. Last night, we sat down to play a game of pit. Those of you who know it know that the goal is to get a corner on all of the products like wheat and barley and oats. At 10 years old, she beat every one of us. I mean, I learned to play pit when I was around 
11, which means I've been playing it 61 years. PhD in books and all that, that's true. You're working on your D-man, uh, Amos, first year student at Harvard, Shauna, great lobbyist. And this 10-year-old girl, and, 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 and you know, it wasn't even close. She beat us like we were a bunch of runaway slaves. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Usually when children, you know, sort of get out of line, in my era, we would send them to bed. She beat us so bad that I got up and went to bed last night. <laughs> this morning we direct your attention to the Lord's Gospel, I mean to the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 1, verses 9 through 17 the New Revised Standard Version, the book of Revelation, not Revelations. There is only one revelation, fullness of who Jesus Christ. I, John, your brother, beginning with verse 9 to verse 18, I, John, your brother, who share with you in, the G in Jesus the persecution and the kingdom and the patient endurance was on the island called Patmos, because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write in a book what you see, send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamon, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. When I turned to see whose voice it was, it spoke to me. And on turning, I saw seven golden Lamp stands, and in the midst of the lamp stands, I saw one like the Son of Man, clothed with a long robe with a golden sash across his chest. His head and his hair were white as white wool, white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, refined as in a f furnace, and his voice was like the sound of many waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars, and from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sh sun shining with full force. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, but he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and, and the last, and the living one. I was dead and see I am alive forever and ever and I have the keys of death and of Hades. The word of God for the people of God may be seated in the presence. You ain't been turned around. You ain't been turned around. Day before yesterday in 1972 when I was 25, I. Uh, I had the privilege of seeing the most, for me at that time, exciting Western movie in my life. It was a movie whose title was Buck and the Preacher. And it starred the iconic Sidney Poitier and, and uh, Harry Belafonte and, Ruby D. I had never seen a movie, a Western movie, that where leading black actors took the lead. And even though I've seen a number of movies since, Buck and the Preacher remains one of my all-time favorites, including Star Wars. The plot revolves around newly freed blacks who were making their way out west under the leadership of black wagon masters to begin not life anew. And many of them were attacked 
by white vigilantes who were determined that they should stay in their place in the South. The group that Sidney Poitier was leading was coming from St. Anne's Parish in Louisiana, and they were on their way to Colorado because one of the elders of the group had told them about a valley that was lush and green and fertile that they could occupy. On their way to Colorado, they were attacked by a group of vigilantes. Homeland Security Forces who uh, took their money, uh, murdered several of their young children, and violently assaulted one of their women. As Sidney Poitier and one of the leaders of the group surveyed the damage, the leader looked at him and said, ain't no use. We just been turned around. But the elder told them that in spite of their losses, they, uh, the valley was still there. And so they made a decision to continue the journey. Ain't no use. We just been turned around. Isn't that what some young person is saying who faces the reality of the, their college degree or their graduate education being delayed because of COVID-19. Ain't no use. We done been turned around. Isn't that how, isn't that how some of our young graduates of the 2020 year felt when they could not attend their graduation service or any of the other activities associated with graduation ain't no use. We just been turned around. Isn't that what some couple is saying who has to put off their plans for that new house or that new car ain't no use. We just done been turned around. Isn't that what some senior is saying who at this stage in their life, they have to deal with shortages in income and making it from week to week ain't no use. We done just, we just done been turned around. Isn't that what some family member is saying that has had to bury some loved one who had been the center of their life ain't no use we ain't been turned around isn't that isn't that what some church is saying planned on growing and building a church that's only 16 years old has the audacity to say we're just not going to build a church. We're going to buy an office complex and build a facility to glorify God for $45 million. And in the midst of the planning and the saving, that church finds itself out of doors, does not know when it will return. And it has to build it in an atmosphere where depression more than delight and questions 
more than certainty abound. Under an administration that is an incompetent, racist, vulgar, lying, misogynistic, and xenophobic. That, that where there has been a resurgence of black hatred that has been undercover And in that atmosphere, instead of having a groundbreaking inside, that church has to uh, have a groundbreaking in the tent that I must say is more sturdy than the first three churches I ever pastored. <laughs> Ain't no use. We done been turned around. Who, who is to say that that's not how the early Christians felt when they found themselves being persecuted by uh, the Roman Empire? E everyone they had ever met, everybody they knew was associated and lived in the shadow of the Roman Empire because the Roman Empire was uh, their whole world. Who is to say that that's not how John felt when he found himself on Patmos? I, I, I mean, he, 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 he heard the Lord say, go forth and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you, and Lord, I'm with you always even until the end of the world. I mean, he had heard, he had heard, he had heard him say uh, that, that you stay in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. He had seen the miracles and maybe he had worked some himself. He, he saw himself as a great international and evangelist and here he is, one long storefront preacher with the weight and the strength and the marching armies and the violence and the power of the mighty Roman Empire against him as he is put into quarantine on Patmos not knowing if it was going to be a death sentence. Who is to say that uh, he didn't feel at points like that leader of that uh, wagon train ain't no use. <laughs> With all my vision and enthusiasm and fire We done been turned around. And he says, I, I share in the persecution. And then he says, um, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I was in, we, we, we don't know what he was doing. There was nothing says that he was worshiping. All we know is that at a moment and a place when he needed a word from God, God showed up. And that, that's, why, that's why every time we uh, assemble for worship, we ought to thank God if we feel his presence. God is not duty bound to show up just cause we show up. And that, that, that's why we used to sing that old hymn, Come Holy Spirit, heavenly dove, with all thy quickening power, come shed abroad thy sacred love in these cold hearts of ours. Just the presence of God is an act that we ain't been turned around. God was with him 
but he was still on Patmos. <laughs> the, the, the presence of God doesn't always mean escape. Sometimes it means extension. Until. Presence of God doesn't always mean uh, that, that we can uh, get out of this. It means that we have to stay in this until. Un un until. Until what? Uh, until uh, the way through the Red Sea appears. Until, until our enemies see another presence walking with us through the fire. Until, until, until when? Until the next morning our enemies see that the lions that was opposed to destroy us are laying down like lambs. Until, until, un until when? Uh, uh, until uh, two days after he was crucified, Jesus is brought to his greatest victory and restoration. Sometimes the presence of God means that you stay where you are because there is an until in your future. I, I, I was... I was in a spirit on the Lord's Day. We, we worship on Sunday because Sunday is the day of the Lord's resurrection. In the Jewish Bible, people were taught to worship on the Sabbath day. And there are some sects who tell us that we are not really following the scripture. But, that, uh, but because the Bible says, remember the Sabbath day, and we worship on Sunday. We worship on Sunday, the day of the resurrection, the Lord's day, because he is Lord of the Sabbath. You, you see, the Sabbath represents completion, but the Lord's day represents conquering. The Sabbath represents finishing. The Lord's day represents the future. <laughs> the, 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 the Sabbath represents the end, but the Lord's day represents an extension. And the Sabbath is the end of the week. We worship on the Lord's day, the beginning of the week, because we live every week under the cover of the resurrection. And you need to know that whatever you are facing, that you are under the cover of the resurrection. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> I, I need you to help me just point to yourself and say, um, the devil is a liar. I will not be defeated. This Patmos is not my end. I live under the cover of restoration and resurrection. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have a... I, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard the voice behind me like a trumpet saying, write in a book what you see. Send it to the seven churches of Asia. In that era, Asia was not a continent. It was a province of the Roman Empire. Write to Ephesus, write a book to Ephesus and Smyrna and Pergamon and Thyatira and Sardis and Philadelphia and Laodicea. Rev. Loxley and Matthew. I've always read Matthew. I'm, I'm not reading this correctly. It says, write a book what you see and send it. Write a book what you see and send it to the seven churches. John is on Patmos. You don't take writing materials to Patmos. When you go to Patmos, you don't take enough ink and parchment to write a book. You, 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 don't, you don't take a word processor to prison, of course, unless you like one of the president's buddies who's going to write a book and then tell all this dirt right before. But, but, but most people... When they go to Patmos, they're not prepared to write 
a book. But, but the Lord tells him, write on Patmos in the midst of your mess with nothing to write with, a book. And the book got written. Could it be that the Lord who uh, is with us until also provides? That, that the Lord will not give you a vision or an assignment without a provision. <laughs> He's still uh, Jehovah Nisi, uh, the Lord our banner. He's still Jehovah uh, Rapha, the Lord our healer. He's still uh, Je Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides for us. And you need to know that no matter what your assignment is, if the Lord is keeping you until he will give you what you need to survive until your until becomes your reality. You know, over the years I've been preaching, I've had people tell me, you know, Reverend, I, uh, I, I didn't know that I, uh, I was that strong or I had, had everything I, I needed uh, when, when, when that crisis hit and when when so-and-so died or when I lost my job or when I got a divorce, I was surprised how strong I was. Well, you know, about 25 years ago when I started traveling, what I started doing was taking a, a piece of money and, and putting it in my wallet as my emergency money so that when uh, I ran into those emergencies, I could just reach <laughs> down on what I had already put in my pocket yeah, to help me bail me out. So when you reach a, a crisis, you need to know that God has already put something in you <clears throat> yeah, that you didn't even know you had. And when you get to that crisis, the only thing God does is reach down in your spirit and in your soul huh, and pull out some strength and revelation and favor that you didn't even know you had and you wondering where you got it from God saw what you were going to face long before you got there and God had put something in you so that when you got to your moment all God said was pull it out and that's why the devil couldn't take it because the devil doesn't know everything God has already put within you. That's why no weapon formed against you shall prosper because the devil doesn't know weapons of faith, weapons of strength that he's already put in your spirit. So, so, so then I, I, I turned to see who spoke to me. And, on, and I turned and I saw seven golden lampstands in the midst of the lampstand. I saw one like son of man clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash across his chest. His head and his hair were white as wool, white as snow. His eyes were like flame of fire. His feet was like burning bronze, refined as in a furnace. And in his voice was like the sound of many waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars. And from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. And his face was like the sun shining with full force. Now, we understand that these words are not to be taken literally. Jesus was not standing there with a sword out of his mouth. The book of Revelation is written in coded language and it comes from scripture that the believers who were being uh, encouraged could understand but the outside world could not understand that this description of Christ comes from uh, Daniel 7 and 9, Daniel 9 comes from Isaiah 43, it comes from several places in the Jewish Bible that the first Christians understood. But those who were outside of the faith didn't understand 
what the Lord was saying to believers. I just need to remind you that, that God will speak to you in ways and show you things that the outside world won't understand. But because you belong to the Lord, yeah, and because you've had some experience in the word of God, you can understand what the Lord is saying clearly that makes no sense. For example, uh, uh, um, if you subtract 10 from 100, the world says you end up with 90. But the word says, if you bring the full tithe and the offering, you don't end up with less. I'll pull you out a blessing that is so great. See, in, in the eyes of faith, 10 from 100 does not equal 90. It, it equals 3,000. I'll pull you out a blessing. If you start off with two fish, five barley loaves, you got enough for one boy's lunch. But faith says, I'm going to thank him for what I have. And I'm going to distribute it. Not only am I not going to feed 5,000, but I'm going to leave something over for the waiters. So when they reach to catch up the fragments, you got 12 baskets full. That makes no mathematical sense. You see, the believer operates from a different perspective, and he has a different understanding of what the Lord can do and what... And so the outside world saying, you're going to have a groundbreaking for what? In the middle of a pandemic? That don't make no sense. Economy's in a mess. People don't know whether or not they're going to have jobs. And you're going to have a groundbreaking, but the people of faith, says that if he can feed 5,000 with two fish and five barley loaves, I know that my God will supply. See, you looking at what's in the bank and oh, what's on Wall Street, but my God goes up in glory according to his riches in I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm about to finish. I'm about to finish. See, that's that's what the key is to tithing. He says, "I'll open up the window in heaven." You see, you can't see in heaven. All you can see is what's on earth. So when God gets ready to bless your life, He'll reach up in place where men and women can't see and pull you out. A blessing. Well, what good is a blessing that I can't receive it? You see, you need to know that the blessing that you can't receive is falls over into the next generation. Some of us are being blessed, not simply because of our tithe. We still being blessed by the overflow from praying mothers. What you are doing here ain't just about you. It's about children that have not been born. They're going to come back and look at this facility and praise God. And they might not even know that the groundbreaking took place during the pandemic. I'll pull out. I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit down after I 
when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he placed his right hand on me saying, do not be afraid. I am the first. I am the last. And I'm the living one. I was dead. See, I am alive forever. And I have the keys of death and of Hades. You need to know that that same Jesus who uh, walked on water, calmed the raging sea, died on the cross, rose early Sunday morning, is right here with you. He with you in your troubles, your down sitting and in your uprising. He with you when you're going in and he's with you when you're going out. You heard me say it, but can I say it again? Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my, 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 my friend. He picked me up and he turned me around. He healed my body, told me to run. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my. I, I, I really am finished. I really am finished. I really am. But when I think about what he's done for me, that's why I gotta praise. <laughs> I got to praise and I got to get it out. I got to praise. I got to shout. I got to song. I got to dance and I got to get it out. second I, I get it I know what's going on y'all ain't been in church for a while and you trying to find your step back you can't touch nobody but just look at somebody and say neighbor I'm trying to get my groove back say neighbor can you show me how to do the dance now pick them up and put them down pick them up and put them down pick them up pick them up
everybody standing, everybody standing, listen. We want to thank God for that word. We want to thank God for the man of God that shared the word. We want to thank God the fruit of the word has already come forth. We want to thank God for Panethea Young. She's joined the church already. Latoya Twyman's already joined the church. And maybe there's somebody else who doesn't know the Lord Jesus for yourself. If you're unsaved, unsure about what it means to be saved, if you don't have Jesus in your heart, if you've not yet made him Lord of your life, good news, I got good news. Today for you is the day of salvation. Just go on and text the number up on the screen and somehow it's gonna reach out to you within a matter of minutes. Pray with you the prayer of salvation. You'll be one of the ranks of the saved. If you're here listening to me right now, you're saved but you don't have a church home you're going you're literally dismembered disconnected you're not a part this is not the season this is not the season for several things it's not the season for looking at black folk the wrong way this is not that season this is not the season to ignore the science and the guidelines but i tell you what else it is is not the season to be uncovered and not have a church home where you're going. This is not that season. Every day of 2020 got something crazy. You need to have a church home, a pastor, a congregation that can support you and strengthen you. If you don't have a church home, go and text that number. If you need to rededicate your life to Christ, you're out there and you've fallen off, you need to come back to him. We want to pray restoration in life. Text that number. Somebody's going to pray for you name by name and need by need. Listen, I've been blessed and I know that you have been as well. And so we praise God for all those that are yet making decisions for Jesus. As he prepared to be dismissed, let me give you some direction. Uh, first of all, again, I want to thank each and every one of you who's helped to make this what it has been and we're just getting started. The best truly is yet to come. I want to give a shout out to my queenly wife, Sister Shauna. We prayed in the parking lot of Blair High School and look what the Lord has done. Listen, I'm going to be over there in the dirt. If you want to turn some shovels and be a part of the groundbreaking, I'll be happy to take a quick picture and we'll turn some shovels together. If you had your offering envelope and you still need to give, there are offering baskets at the back and one of those who, persons who have been serving in the sun all day would be happy to direct you in your giving. Uh, finally, we're excited uh, because we're moving into some new things. Uh, we're going to be talking about the CDC and all that God is doing through that. want to encourage you to sign up for blackidea.com. Amen. But look over there. Everybody look over there. That's the last time you're going to see that look like that. Because from here on in, a sanctuary is coming up. And a place where God's name is going to be glorified. Amen. Ah, oh, shucks. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. All blessings. unto you. Yeah. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. Give you his shalom and nomen de Jesu Christi nostre domini. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord.
God bless you. Please follow the directions of our ushers who will dismiss you.